What's going on guys? I know that this has probably been uh, done and said a million times before, but I figured to take the opportunity while we had it, um, I want to talk to you guys about the difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS 5.3 rods and pistons. Um, there's a bunch of differences uh, that you'll notice and that are very physically, you know, able to see them very well with no issue. Uh, we're not really going to go into the fine measurements of everything. Uh, everything for the purpose of this video you'll be able to see just through my explanation and you'll, you know, just by holding the two of them together. So here we've got, we've got two sets of uh, rods and pistons. On the right here we've got Gen 3 5.3 rod and piston. On the left here we have Gen 4 5.3 rod and piston. Um, this is mostly what you're going to encounter. There are some differences and some different things and you know what motor it came out of and blah 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 but generally speaking this is what you're going to encounter. The first thing that you're going to notice is that the width uh, and the girth of the, uh, yes I said girth, of the Gen 3 uh, rod itself is much skinnier than the Gen 4. Um, in terms of length and everything else I believe these are identical or damn near identical <clears throat> but you'll notice that in terms of strength you know, this is why people use a Gen 4 rod and piston because the strength of the rod, just naturally by the size of it, is going to be stronger than the Gen 3. So you can see that um, on all angles there. You know, a little bit wider there, definitely wider there, definitely heavier there. Um, another thing that you'll notice is that the Gen 3 piston is a press fit. So you actually have to press those in and out. The Gen 4 is held in with a clip. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a clip in there. You pull that clip, it'll slide right out. Um, so that is uh, what they call floating wrist pin, I believe. So that's gonna be a floating wrist pin. That is gonna be a pressed fit wrist pin. Um, one of the other differences you'll notice, and you, there's gonna be some variances here, but the Gen 3 piston shape is a dome piston shape and the Gen 4 is a flat top. This here is a flat top with valve reliefs in it. So there's some difference in the, uh, the style of the piston as well and the design overall. Hold those next to each other, you can see. Um, you know, that's gonna affect different compression ratios and different measurements. Like I said, we're not gonna go in too deep about the full differences of everything and actual specific measurement. This is more just a basic how-to and help identify. Um, so if you have a motor and you're not sure, there's a bunch of different ways that you can identify whether it's a Gen 3 or a Gen 4 motor. Um, but if it's a situation where you've got some pistons, you can take a look just at the physical design of the, the rod and the piston itself and help identify. Um, or if you know, take the oil pan off and you shine a flashlight up in there and you should be able to see. Uh, one of the big things that, you know, if you're looking for it with a flashlight, as you can see, this this rod here is flat on both ends. This rod is flat on one end, and then it curves in on the other. So just some quick identifying things. This is a very simple upgrade to your Gen 3 motor. Um, for all intents and purposes, these will basically fit and slap right into your Gen 3 motor, even though it's a Gen 4 rod and piston. Um, all the measurements are either identical or close enough that you know that you shouldn't have an issue with it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get these pistons cleaned up and install them in our Gen 3 motor. Um, stay tuned for that, because we're gonna be doing a video on that as well. And uh, also stay tuned because we're gonna be starting to sell performance short and long blocks for the budget-minded uh, builder, as well as all the way up to you know good cranks, great rods and pistons, aftermarket stuff for you know for whatever you need. Generally speaking, a budget-minded motor uh, easily makes six, seven, eight hundred horsepower in a turbo application with no issue. Um, so I ask you if you guys want to see more videos, you go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Check us out and stay updated. Uh, we're actually sending one of the blocks off to the machine shop today so we can get started on this project. And uh, check out other videos for more. Thanks, guys.